Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.2.2 and in this video I have my smallest rocket, my small, smallest orbital rocket I should say and this is called One Ton because it is One Ton. The goal was to create a rock, orbital rocket that had a mass of One Ton and we, we went a little bit over 1.073 here and uh, we are just basically launching Explorer Core but with this mass, this is an order of magnitude smaller than the rocket that actually launched Explorer 1, which was the Juno 1. This is much tinier than that, though admittedly not as reliable. So there is that. And basically it's a CubeSat launcher when you think about it. There is no avionics though, uh, so we can't control it after launch except staging. We can control staging. And that is all we're going to do. It's going to have to figure itself out and of course the initial tilt is critical and that will determine how quickly it flattens out and whether it makes orbit or not. Well, well we're gonna give it a try and we'll see what happens. I'll try and show every test of this version. I, I'll talk more about its configuration on the launch pad. Now if you watched my Twitch live streams you may have already seen this if you caught the occasions where I've used it. Uh, but otherwise, I don't think I've made a YouTube video about it, so that's why we're here. So I'm gonna throw all up. Uh, there's no point in SAS really. And the first stage is a Rutherford engine, and that is one of the engines from the Electron rocket. There's the sea level variant, and so the, uh, the Electron rocket has nine of these, this only has one. And the important thing about it is that instead of turbo pumps, it uses electric pumps to pump the fuel. So it consumes a lot of electric charge, so we need to make sure we have that, enough of that for it to use. So here we go. Uh, ignition and launch. Insufficient avionics, of course. And now it's all up to the fins, really. I tried, of course, to minimize the size of the fins because they're just dead weight. And we're trying, you know, of course, mass is important in this particular experiment. It's important not to have too much of a rotation, otherwise the fuel is going to become unsettled. Uh, real fuels models the fact that if you're spinning too fast, uh, that will cause problems for feeding the fuel into the engine. And so, yeah, keep your spin moderate. And the way we're doing that here is actually, the tilted fins are small ones here. You can see there are small fins interspersed with the big ones. The big ones are just supposed to hold us to prograde. The small ones are the ones that manage the rotation. Still there is a wobble. You can see a procession. It's supposed to not wobble. Okay, our apoapsis is in space. That's good. The upper stage engine is a 1 kN thruster being fed with Kavia B. And Kavia B, uh, it provides Currently, I've got it on tech level 5, so we've got an ISP of 305, which is not as good as with Arizine and N204, but it it seems a little bit more legit, and it works out, its density is good, so we can pack a lot of it into that space. Now, we're obviously not flat, so that's not ideal, it's not going to magically arc or anything. We may need to tilt just a little bit more, but it's so sensitive. Another way to fix this is actually to just make the upper stage tank a little bit heavier. Now we should check our upper stage burn time. Five minutes. So actually, uh, well, we aren't tilted up, so that complicates matters. And I think... Maybe here. Let's try it. Okay, again, it's a pressure-fed tank, a pressure-fed engine, so we don't have to worry about selling the fuel down, technically. We're not supposed to, anyway. We can check our total delta V here, and I don't know, I don't think it'll leave us making orbit uh, if you sum up the available delta V with our current velocity. So that's a shame. I'm not too sure if physical time warp is somewhat messing it up, but anyway, obviously we started this a little bit too early. 
We should have waited longer. Maybe we should start um wait until we start descending before igniting this. Because we're ending up with a very high apoapsis now. Okay, so that's not good. Let's try it again with some tweaks. Taking a look at this, maybe I'll try making the top of this the same width as the bottom part. And let's see how much change that gives us if the bottom here is extended to that width. Okay, so my theory is that since we've made the upper stage heavier, it's going to start tilting down faster, and that is what we want. So here we go. Ignition and launch. Of course, the fact that we reduce the size of the lower stage might hurt that theory because our thrust weight ratio is still the same, more or less. We may want to just reduce the initial thrust to weight ratio. That would certainly pull it down. But then that would hurt our ability to get to orbit as far as just having the 8800 delta V that we have. Another problem is this heating, obviously. If we pitch down too much too quickly, we're going to end up getting rather hot, and ferromerospace research will eventually destroy our craft. Okay, well, we've got an apoapsis barely out of the atmosphere. Last time it was at 200 kilometers, so obviously we've got more horizontal speed this time. This time I'm going to start at 50 seconds, and we'll see what happens. It's all a matter of timing. Well, I don't feel like we're there yet. We need substantially more delta V. Maybe I should just bite the bullet and make it a 1.2 ton launcher. Yep, lopsided orbit again. Alright, but well, not in orbit at all. Okay, well, let's tune it a little bit further. I feel at this point it's more about the tilt. I, I don't want to rebalance it like that. So, uh, using the rotation mechanism and holding down shift, that seems a bit extreme, doesn't it? Okay, but at least we know we've tilted it by one notch holding down shift, and we, have, uh, we could obviously tilt it... Uh, much more subtly if we aren't doing it with uh, snap-on. Okay, that's a serious tilt. Let's hope it doesn't blow up. Throttle up, and ignition, and launch. And it's looking like it's gonna just crash into the ocean, isn't it? Well, uh, we've passed Mach 4, <laughs> but that's about it. I guess I can stage if I want to. Okay, back to VAB. Okay, I've reloaded the original 1 ton 3, so without that tilt. And this time when I tilt it, I'm going to turn off snap. And I'm going to tilt it by as little as I can. There, that's it. That's that's as little as I can. I don't know how much that is, but let's just go in steps of as little as I can and work from there. So let's see what happens with this. Okay, here we go. Throttle up. And ignition and launch. So previously our ending pitch was around 40 degrees and we'll see what happens this time. Okay, well that's not a space worthy apoapsis, but our pitch angle is not zero. So if we start the upper stage engine a little bit before apoapsis, we should extend our apoapsis a little bit. The question is, do we have enough fuel? And Probably not. We'll see. Okay, here we go. Our 1 kilonewton upper stage engine actually provides 1.7 kilonewtons, so more than 1 kilonewton. 
Well, it might be too late for this one, because we're going down fast, and it hasn't really picked up steam yet. Okay, well, here we go. And I think the solution for this is to add more fuel to the first stage so that the first stage can get us to uh, space apoapsis. And also starting the second stage a little bit earlier would help. Okay, let's try that. Okay, well the 1 ton 4 is going to be admittedly a little bit bloated here. It's going to be 1.2 tons and we'll see how that works out for us. Uh, it's got all of 9,024 meters per second it says here, though it seems to say something else once we get on the launch pad. Okay, we'll take a look and maybe this will work better for us. Okay, well, you can see the tilt here. It's about 4 degrees, between 3 and 4 degrees, I think. So just as a reference, ignition and launch. I sure hope you weren't expecting me to just show the glorious result of all the testing and uh, show how wonderfully smart I am. I'm just uh, just trying to figure it out. Still, it's encountering quite a lot of drag like this, but I did add the barest amount of tilt that I could. And, well, this time it's seeming to end up in a very bad trajectory. Okay, well, this is obviously not going to work. Um, let's try and lighten up the upper stage in compensation, I guess. Okay, throttle up, ignition, and launch. No, I think the whole 1.2 ton variant is a bust. Yeah, I think this is not going to work out either. I think that's overburdening the whole thing. We really need a thrust weight ratio of 2. There is one other option. I haven't actually used the best efficiency here. I've been sort of saving that option. We we're only at tech level 5 with a 307 vacuum ISP. I can easily just increase this and get an extra 100 about 160 meters per second but we'll save that if we're close I, I just want to you know reserve that option once we've got everything else sorted out so let's try this now it might be that maybe I should just go back to the original tilt ignition and launch well it's definitely encountering some resistance here but we may just poke through. This time though I'm gonna have to stage immediately. No coasting. That's... I think. I think that's what this is looking like. Okay. Well this is looking sorta of good. But obviously we're too low. And we're going to burn up. But, you know, other than that, maybe we should go back to the original diameter, um, which is this. And finally, take advantage of, and actually up that utilization more, just a little bit. And take advantage of the extra tech levels. This has to be a service module tank because of the electric charge. I mean, we've got two service module tanks, which is sort of heavy. I wonder if it can have the electric charge up here, but I don't know. Or maybe it'd be better just to strap some batteries on the bottom of it instead of having it in the main tank. Or have a separate tank for the battery. Uh, but logically, I mean... I don't know, well actually that's pretty heavy, right? I mean, dry mass of 85 kilograms for a wet mass of 867 kilograms? I think these days we'd be able to make a tank better than that, right? So let's have the battery separate. 
and we just want electric charge and we don't need that much we really don't even need that much four kilograms still don't even need that much that's about what we have in the bottom right now okay so instead of a service module tank and what we want is a minute and 43, 49 seconds oh it's got the split 20, 30 and it'll automatically put the electric charge well let's just uh... well if we go default it can't do that right yeah if we go default it can only put the kerosene and oxygen and in the right proportion so now we have a better thrust to weight ratio I probably won't go full utilization that's the same burn time but we have a lot more delta V now okay that's a big difference though I don't know how legit that is but we're gonna call it one ton five okay so here we go again ignition and launch I wonder how much drag we actually get in this part it says three kilonewtons there which is quite a lot considering our main engine here where is it is only 22.2 kilonewtons more than 10 percent we may have to just restore our pitch a little bit higher. Yeah, I mean, this is just too much. Okay, let's try this. And um, actually, we can check on our current pitch, might be helpful. I swear, I think the launch clamp is tilted this time. So that might be messing us up. We should keep an eye on this. Our pitch is currently 5.6 degrees. I think that's too much. I think the launch clamp is messing us up. Uh, let me try and revert to launch and see what happens. Yep, yeah, it, it jerked right there. It was straight and then it turned. Now it's 5.1 degrees. Hmm. Okay, this is getting ridiculous. Um, every time I reload it, it seems to get worse. Uh, though it, it usually only tilted by uh, to like 5 degrees, but this time it went all the way to 75 degrees really launch clamp I don't know what does this but if you're having trouble with uh, these rockets which don't have guidance and you're trying to make sure that they get to orbit and everything you're trying this sort of thing but maybe with a larger rocket or whatever um, check your launch clamp uh, it might be messing with you uh, you might be actually getting a subtly different angle each time and that's throwing off your results yeah maybe I should just restart the game at this point I feel like maybe restarting would be a good idea okay so this is post restart and it says our pitch angle is 2.8 degrees I'm just taking 90 and subtracting that out I had also noticed uh, previously that the hitting and roll angle had been way off as well so the launch clamp was not only tilting in one direction it was tilting in all directions which takes talent anyway uh, so let's try it at 2.8 and see how we need to adjust it and maybe you know the launch clamp will uh, tilt in a nice direction next time who knows this seems awful steep right now um, but we'll try it quickly and it's probably steep because I overcompensated for the fact that the launch clamp had been tilting so let's see ignition and launch well we're at a <laughs> high pitch again this is familiar okay that's pretty high up but I don't think the combination of our remaining delta V in the upper stage plus the service horizontal speed is going to be enough to make orbit so yeah we need to adjust the tilt again uh oh uh, it's up to its old hijinks again now it's down to 80 degrees or 10 degree well 9.4 degree pitch let's try that again you normally don't think about launch clamp betraying you but that's what we're dealing with what if we put two launch clamps maybe it would be better with two launch clamps 
or will they both tilt? Obviously this is not going to work right. We're at 8.5 degrees. Let's let's try two launch clamps and see if that makes a difference. Uh, it seemed to move a little bit, but not much. We're at four degrees. Well, that's uh, that's what I wanted. So, let's see what happens at four degrees. Ignition and launch. Okay, much less heating this time so far. Well, we'll see. We haven't really gotten out of the thick of it yet. Okay, well. The first stage definitely got us to a uh, space apoapsis. And surface horizontal speed is 2,600 and so. Uh, so if we take the upper stage delta V and add it to that, we should have enough. Well, let's see. But we're not tilted ideally right now. We're sort of wobb- well, we're, no, we're just uh, around- no, we are wobbling. For some reason the rotation is slowing down, I'm not sure it's supposed to. Um, we were on physical time warp, it's definitely not supposed to slow down. Game. Yeah, the, the rotation definitely should not have slowed down, there's nothing past 140 kilometers that should have done that. But anyway, let's get a move on. So we've ended up at 35 to 36 degrees here. And actually, it's tilting up a little bit more now, too. So we could do with a little bit more than 4 degrees, maybe like 4.5. But probably 5 degrees would be too much. I don't know if we can actually tilt it by a factor of less than a degree in the VAB. So we might have to just tweak the mass of things. Well, uh, I'll call it progress and proceed with a change in tilt. Okay, well, the best I could do was 4.8 degrees, so we'll see how it goes like this. And ignition and launch. Well, here again, we're experiencing a lot of drag this time because of lower pitch. But we've managed to come through it. Okay, this time we end with a surface horizontal speed of 2,800, and our current pitch is 22 degrees, and drifting down. Let's keep an eye on that, actually, as we physical time warp here. Well, this time we should have enough, I hope. The pitch angle is still drifting up, though. Okay, well... We apparently are not going to start going down, so still a little bit too much pitch here. I think 22 would have been fine, but because it drifted up now to 28 and 29 degrees, that uh, will increase how lopsided our orbit is going to be. I'm still hoping that we're going to end up in orbit, but it's tough to say. Okay, 30 seconds left, and it's going to be tight, especially because of our pitch. And our apoapsis is going well out of hand. And nope, it's not going to make it. It's just too far up at now 37 degrees pitch. Okay, maybe just a little bit flatter. Will it let me? I don't know. Let's find out. Well, the smallest increment I seem to be able to turn it at is about 0.75 degrees. So we went from 4.8 degrees to now 5.5. And that's where we're at, but two launch clamps seem necessary for this business. So they seem to be steady instead of constantly tilting. One launch clamp does not seem to work out. But here we go again. Ignition and launch. Well, let's keep the flight data up. And, well, as you can see, drag 5.3 to 5.4 kilonewtons was the max. Where's our engine? Anyway, the end, that means that uh, we peak out with a drag of about 25% of our engine thrust. We're at uh, 16 degrees now. That's good. But we're probably not going to end up in space. Which is bad. Well, let's get the upper stage going now, I think. But that pitch is drifting up already, darn it. 
Okay, well, we're once again going to be close. Our apoapsis is going all over the place, but our periapsis will not be any higher than our current altitude, so we have to actually get to 140 kilometers before we can get a periapsis of it. Nope. Well, it's fast. I mean, obviously, we've got the velocity, we've got the delta v, it's just a matter of tra trajectory. I'll try and tilt it down just a little bit more, but you know, the more we do that, the more drag we get also. One more try. Okay, well, it looks like two launch clamps uh, is not a foolproof way of solving this. As you can see, they're bent backwards this time, <laughs> leading to a much steeper thing, and also the heading and roll angle are wrong, which is uh, positively special. Yep, so there doesn't seem to be any solution to the launch clamps being out of whack. Well, this seems rather severe. We've got it at 6.6 uh, .6 degrees. But it looks like the launch clamps aren't responsible for that. So, 6.6 .6 degrees. We'll try it. We'll try it and see what happens. Last time was 5.5, .5, so it's 1.1 degrees more than last time, which is a lot. And I wish I could fine tune it a little bit tighter than that, but let's try this. Ignition and launch. Okay, obviously a lot of dynamic pressure, and this time the drag is peaking out at 6.6 .6 kilonewtons, so 30% of our thrust. That's the price you pay if you uh, go shallower. And it's too shallow. Okay, well, I've had enough of this. The answer lies somewhere between 5.5 .5 and 6.6 .6 degrees, but... Whether I'm actually going to be able to get that on the launch pad is... Well, it's going to be a trick. Anyway, the trials and tribulations of the one-ton rocket, folks. And as this uh, proceeds to explode, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.